Here are three ideas coming from postmodernism that are now commonplace. Idea number one. In the days following Martin Luther, the Bible was the go-to source for determining what is morally true, right, and just. Later on, during the modern era, the popular determining factor for all truth, moral and otherwise, was human reason, mixed not with the Bible, but with the scientific method alone. But in postmodern times, neither the Bible, science, nor human reason provide the guide for determining truth. Today, personal opinion, intuition, gut instinct, and my experience are acceptable sources for determining right and wrong. Idea number two. In the postmodern world, truth is never universal, absolute, or transcendent. Truth is a mental construct created by various social groups or individuals, and truth varies from group to group or person to person. You have your truth, and I have mine. Idea number three. All so-called truths are equally valid, and they do not conflict with one another, because truth is multidimensional, like the multidimensions of quantum physics. My truth is just as valid as your truth. P plus CT equals X. While P stands for postmodernism, CT stands for critical theory. The seeds of critical theory go back to ideas of Karl Marx in the late 1800s. But again, it took a 100 years for critical theory to reach the streets of America after it was nurtured by a band of German Marxists known as the Frankfurt School. These intellectuals came to the United States in the 1930s to take up residency in key universities. Here are three big ideas of critical theory that came out of the ivory towers. Idea number one, society is made up of only two groups of people, the oppressed and the oppressors. Put another way, the dominant groups and the dominated groups. The classification of oppressor group is determined by things like skin color, gender, social status, and religion. Critical race theory imparts the astounding idea that if you are white, you are unavoidably an oppressor. No matter if you are meek and mild or loud and bossy, it doesn't matter. That's because white is the leading skin color of people in the U.S. and is therefore oppressive. All white people are in a class of oppressors and thus guilty of systemic racism. Christianity is also oppressive, according to critical theory, because Christianity has been the leading religion in the United States since its inception. Christianity is therefore oppressive. This is the case in spite of how individual Christians may feel or how pleasant a particular Christian may be. Christians are all systemic oppressors. Idea number two. Oppression of human beings, as they defined oppression, is the enemy, no matter what form the oppression takes. And freedom from obligation to conform to any dominant norm is the goal. If the nuclear family is considered normal, that is a family consisting of a father, a mother, and children, this is now deemed oppressive to any other family structure. The norm of the nuclear family must be brought down. Idea number three. Social change is the intended outcome, and activism is the means. Critical theory requires its adherents to fundamentally change society. Critical theory activists see themselves as liberators. They believe they have a just cause that morally requires activism. It's not enough to call people out. You must bring them down and eliminate dissent. It's the way of critical theory. It's like a religious cult. The mixture of Nietzsche and Marx combining postmodernism with critical theory created a potent and toxic brew, which spilled into the consciousness of many Americans in 2020 who previously had no idea what the terms postmodernism or critical theory meant. The burning of cities caught their attention. This was the perfect storm. Postmodernism provided the necessary underpinnings, while critical theory provided the fuel and the force to shove its self-proclaiming, liberating ideology on people's lives without being asked. It's called revolution. And this brings us back to the formula for loss of free speech, collapse of moral order, and the downfall of the United States. P plus CT equals X. X stands for cancel culture. What norms are being canceled? What oppressions are being brought down? Heterosexual marriage as normative, male-female distinctions, masculinity, whiteness, Western society and Western history, 
U.S. history, the police, national borders, historic Christianity. Historic Christianity is the hidden brass ring, because when it goes, a lot of so-called oppression goes with it. The Ten Commandments are neither the Ten Suggestions nor the Ten Options. For the true blue critical theorist, law itself is oppressive. Because historic Christianity provides transcendent norms, it is seen as needing to be silenced through public opinion first, intimidation next, and by force, legal or otherwise, when necessary.